this tutorial I just want to run through a brief workflow that's a fairly good one and one I use quite regularly with Adobe Audition. So if I've got a soundtrack that I need to change and I need to adjust the audio in, I would quite often do it in Adobe Audition because I feel that the feedback you get is a lot easier to use than it is directly within Premiere Pro, although the Premiere Pro tools are still excellent. So what I would do is take the clip and right click on it and go to Edit Clip in Adobe Audition and that opens up Adobe Audition and as I've mentioned before, if I just go back to Premiere Pro, we get an extracted waveform. So this is extracted, if I actually zoom in a bit you can see that it's called extracted. So audio extracted, basically it's saying it's not going to edit the original, it's going to edit a copy so that the original is unaffected which is exactly what you want. Go back to Adobe Audition. So here is the waveform of the clip that I want to work on. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do in Adobe Audition and this is not an Audition tutorial in the sense of I'm going to show you lots and lots of bits and pieces in Audition but I'm going to show you a good workflow to start off with. This is your effects rack down here. Now there are slightly more effects if you go to the effects menu item up here where you see you've got lots of effects and you'll find a slightly more up here than you will in the effects rack for various reasons which I'm not going to go into. But for the sort of things I want to do at the moment this is going to really help us to show what to do. Now the first one is I want the sound to sound better. Maybe it's not got enough bass, maybe it's not got enough treble. It's tempting to go to EQ and actually in Premiere Pro I do go to EQ because it gives me the same look. But if I show you the EQ here, if I go to effects rack and I go to filter and EQ and I go to a standard graphic equalizer, say there's a 10 band graphic equalizer, it's quite hard to work with because I need to play with these individual settings which I find you know, a bit annoying um, and not really ideal for the sort of way that the sort of audio I work with in video. So that's not, all I, not what I would choose. I would go for the one that looks the same as the EQ in Premiere Pro, interestingly enough, called Parametric EQ. Now Parametric EQ in, or Equalizer in Premiere Pro is a one item. So you don't get this range, it's just about one frequency. Whereas the EQ in Premiere Pro looks a lot more like this, which is about lots of different frequencies. Now, if your item has not got enough bass, you can go in and you can increase the bass. If it's not got enough treble, you can increase the treble. If it's got too much hiss, you can pull the hiss down. Generally speaking, for spoken word, I tend to keep the middle ones on the line. If you go off the line, it kind of begins to get either a bit robotic or a bit odd sounds a bit weird but you need to play with these now the beauty about this particular effect is if I want to listen to it I just hit the space bar and continue adjusting as it's playing round I've got the loop button on so it would loop backwards and round and round I'm not actually going to do it I'm just telling you how you can the other thing is if you've got a particular problem with a particular frequency say we've got a particular problem with frequency band 1 here which is these are the controls here I can choose the gain, so how high or how low it will go, or physically just click and drag as need be. But I can also make it very narrow, or I can make it very wide. What do I mean by that? Well, watch. If I play with this one called Q-Width, and start to pull it one way or the other, you'll see that I can make it extremely narrow, because I've got a particular problem with a particular frequency that I can just pull out at that particular frequency, because I've made it such a narrow frequency range. Or alternatively, I'm going to take it back positively, because often we want to do that, we can go lower than 2 and actually make it quite wide to make a really nice smooth curve. And you can do that with both of them, you know, the upper frequencies and the lower frequencies, just to make the curve a little bit smoother depending on what you want to do. I like the middle ones to stay on the actual curve itself, on the actual middle line, because I just think it sounds a little bit better. So you can play around with those. If the audio value seems to go a little bit high, don't worry, because we'll deal with that in the next section. So that's applied, and it's on with the green light. If you want to see what it sounds like before and after, you push play and just click on and off to turn it on and off to see what it sounds like before and after. And you can get a good feel for what's going on. And as I say, if you've got this loop button going, it'll go round and round and round. So I would advise doing that a lot off and on just to see what the difference you've made is and then you can if you've got a real problem with bass say you can put a shelf in which is what this is really and it just pulls it right down and again this this higher one here is actually the shelf it's sort of I don't know if you can see that but it just kind of just makes a little bit more cuts really okay those are the cuts so 
it falls off more of an edge if you actually put the shelf off and it's similar on the base but you don't see it a great deal on this particular example then simply X off because it's still there in your effects rack the next one to choose is the one that I use all the time is a new one uh, actually I think from CS 5.5 under amplitude and compression it's the one that says the speech of volume leveler and when it comes in it comes up in a default setting like this and rather than going through all the settings in great detail I'm just telling you which ones I use I tend to leave the settings very much like this I like it to boost quite a bit but this one I don't tend to want to play with the noise levels too much so I tend to pull this one down if you leave it up here what it tends to do is boost the low level noise so as soon as you've got a hole in your clip you'll suddenly hear that hiss go right up really loud so I tend not to want the, the gaps, particularly on speech, to be particularly high. So I tend to pull this one right down. But if you do want low signals to be boosted, clearly you can do. But, but this is basically making sure that that hiss doesn't become very dramatic during a gap in your audio. So that's a typical setting for how I tend to work with it. Now, when you play it back, and I'm just going to hit the space bar, you'll see the original and you'll see the new version. So this is the input and this is the output. So if I push play... <laughs> You can see the difference between the right? two. Oh my goodness, what have you done? It's just a joke, Mr. Oh, quick, who's the first? So you can see that the original was much lower, but the newer one is much closer to being right up here. But it won't go into the red if you use this particular approach. Now, if you want to reduce the amount of effect, you've got what's called a wet dry slider here. So, wet at 100%, all of the effect is applied at 100%. If you want to reduce the amount, you can pull them down. You can turn off individual effects here, or you can turn them off for the whole file here. But what you must do before you save it is you must apply it. So if I click apply, watch the waveform, because it'll be fairly quick, and the waveform will change its shape. So click apply, and as you can see, it's made it much louder. It's boosted it up, but nothing is going over the top. And the whole thing is a lot more balanced all the way through. And also, notice, by the way, it's applied to the entire file. You can do it to a selection only if you want. So if I just wanted to do it to a selection, you just click and drag to make a selection, and you can apply just to a selection if that's what you want to do. So that's how I can actually do those ones. One other workflow, you do need to save it, by the way. Once you save it, File, Save, you'll find that what will happen is it updates in Premiere Pro. And there you go, you can see it's updated there. One other one just to show you, I've got a whole bunch of clips here and these clips in this area are all different C sounds and they're all different volumes. What you can do is you can select a whole bunch of clips, right click and edit in Adobe Audition and it will go through and render and replace all of those clips. Then now change colour just to say that these ones are now going to be rendered and replaced clips. You can see they're a different colour. If I go back to Audition here are all the files. Okay, my original 3DCs and all the rest of them, they're all here. Now, there is a panel under Windows which is called Match Volume. I'm only going to do this with a few of them, but if you select a few of these here, so I'm just going to do with a Shift Select, say this bunch here, and I drag them down and drop them in there, they're all in there. I can then simply go to my Match Volume settings. And it's going to say, right, what's the loudness supposed to be and whatever. But basically what you want to do is click Run. And when you click Run, it analyzes them all out and then changes the volume of every single one of them. So you can see the changes that have taken place here. Okay, so this is all that's gone on and makes changes. So you can see here it's plus point. 0.087 dB. This one is plus 21 dB because it was so quiet. And when I click save, or save all in this case, you do save and save all, what will happen is all those clips will come back in and the volume will be matched for each one of them. So you can see some of them have been not been changed. That's obviously the reference clip down here, I guess. And then all the others have been. And it's just done in one easy movement by selecting all the ones you wanted to match the volume of and bring them all in. Of course, you do need to listen to them. You do need to use your common sense to make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. But overall, those are two very quick workflows that I use in Audition all the time, which just makes Audition an invaluable product to run alongside Premiere Pro.